Disney, 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 Disney. You did it again. Disney has been in a down spiral for quite a while. We could all agree, especially when it comes to animated movies and especially when you compare it to the classics. We had movies like Elemental, Strange World, which I mean, Strange World did have a unique story, but I mean, it's just okay. Encanto, which I mean, it was okay, good art. There was a couple good songs, but again, it was very eh. Lightyear, bleh. Luca, Onward, and so on and so forth. It just feels like every new Disney animated movie just, <laughs> just falls flat, it's boring, generic. I mean, at this point, I really think it's just very formulaic. They got a Disney formula and they're just gonna follow it. But holy shit, did they really just cram all that mediocrity that they've been doing lately into this one piece of garbage, and that's Wish. The movie's writing is so goddamn bad, there is so much speculation as to whether or not this movie was written by AI, or at least the concept was written by AI. And I'll be honest, I would not put it past Disney to actually use AI to write this. I mean, we've all heard about the whole writer's situation. Hell, if you guys have seen my Disney iceberg, uh, yeah, Disney's not really afraid of doing scummy things. But the reason that so many people believe that this is written by AI is the writing and the plot and the songs, everything about this movie, it just doesn't feel human. It's hollow, it, it just feels empty. So if you guys don't know, this movie was actually created to celebrate Disney's 100 year anniversary of their animated studio, which yeah, that's a pretty freaking big deal. As someone who reviews animated movies, Disney movies have been a huge part of my childhood, and most if not all of them are absolutely incredible. So to see Disney fall in such a terrible way is quite depressing. But I would like to clarify, you know, I don't really give a shit about uh, the company as a whole, you know, they're kind of assholes a lot of times. But I'm more talking about the actual workers in there, the people who put in the blood, sweat, and tears, the writers, the animators, etc. But if you guys remember the Disney theme song, when you wish upon a star. They basically took that and just worked backwards and made a movie off of that. Guys, hear me out. What if someone did wish upon a star and then something happened? Brilliant, brilliant. Every single cliche you could possibly think of was just checked off of a list going down in this movie. The book opening intro, the intro song that just reads the plot and setting of the movie. And this intro song was especially just reading the plot and setting of the movie. Like it felt like they were just reading the plot from a script and then putting music behind it. They got a forbidden magic book with evil powers. Whenever bad guy starts being bad, green lights come out of him, you know, green magic. We got a friendship betrayal, the power of friendship to save the day, talking animal friend, marketable plushies, and not to mention the overbearing amount of Disney movie references in this movie. Like, don't get me wrong, I get it. It's the 100 year anniversary, you're making a movie about that, but holy shit. They spent so much time putting in references they forgot to put in a movie. Okay, so let's just talk about the animation because there's actually a lot of controversy when it comes to the animation. Now, what do you guys think? Do you think this is just lazy animation or they tried to do a style choice or my personal opinion? It's a little bit of both. I feel like they realized they could be lazy and not render the background, but also try to make the backgrounds look kind of like a watercolor painting just to make it uh, seem like it's a style choice. But in reality, they were just lazy. And I'll be the first one to admit, I did actually say when I was watching the trailer, you know what, this style's kind of cool. I kind of like this. But whenever I watched the movie, it kept going and going and it just started feeling like hollow. It felt like the characters were standing in front of a green screen half the time and they just slapped the background behind them. And that really made me believe they were just trying to save time without rendering the backgrounds for sure. I can't really see this as a style choice because they could have had the same effect with stuff that was, you know, rendered. And it is very disappointing seeing this level of animation coming from a company that has been around for a hundred years and is also the largest animation company in the world. You would think they would use this as an opportunity to show their stuff, you know, to show everyone what they got. I would just like to clarify here. I don't know the deadlines of these animators. I don't know if they were overworked like a MAPPA situation or something like that. I don't know if they had like a very limited time to post this movie. So they just tried to rush and get through everything just to throw up the movie. You know, if that's the case, it's on Disney, which let's be real, it is. Like, even if I don't know the situation, it's all on Disney. So let's talk about the story. 
you know? There isn't one. Okay, well, there is kind of a story, but it's just, you know, not good. So the basic plot is this. There was a handsome, charismatic sorcerer. He ended up moving to this island because something bad happened to him. He created a kingdom and he became the king. And every time someone becomes 18, he will use his magic to take their wish from them and potentially grant them. And the rules are this. You will completely forget about your wish once it has been taken. And every once in a while, there will be a wish ceremony where the king will grant a wish to a citizen. And from what I can gather from this is the people who ask for a wish to be granted are the ones who have a dream, but they don't have the means. Maybe they're too old. Maybe it's something that is completely impossible without magic, but they end up giving it to him in order to potentially grant the wish. And gradually throughout the movie, the king becomes mad with power, blah, blah, blah. He takes everyone's dreams to give himself more power, but, I don't really think the concept is that bad. If done right, we could have had a pretty decent movie, but wow, it is written so terribly. Especially the bad guy, King Magnifico. The reason this character is absolute garbage is because he has zero backstory and so much wasted potential because we never understand why he does what he does. The only thing we ever get about a backstory of him is a picture. And then like the picture's like kind of burnt off. And when I saw like the burnt off piece, I thought like later on in the movie, there was gonna be a moment where he shows what really happened. And it would be like, oh, he was actually the bad guy. That's what I was thinking was gonna happen. But no, we got nothing. All he says is, I don't want this to ever happen again. What happened? We don't know because we never figure out what that was. We just don't. But throughout the movie, he talks about how he's doing everyone a favor and in giving them mercy to take away a wish from their brain that they cannot achieve because it saves them from the pain of realizing they can never reach that goal. So I believed that maybe we would get some sort of backstory talking about why he has these motivations, talking about maybe that his wish died or something like that. And he had to deal with all this traumatic pain because there was a goal that he was never able to achieve. And so he decided to create a kingdom where no one would ever have to think about wishes again. And they could just live happily because they'll never suffer the pain of knowing they'll never reach their goal. See, that would have been a good goddamn character right there. But no, they really had to go the route of he big bad guy, big bad guy, open forbidden book. Now he bigger bad guy. Super bad guy, big power bad guy. Like it's such lazy writing and such a huge missed opportunity for a great character. I was hoping with all of my being that at the end of the movie, there would be some sort of like background of him. He would start realizing his mistakes. He would explain, oh, the only reason I became evil is because I wanted to save everyone from this pain. And then he'd realize at the end that having a dream, even if you can't achieve it, is way more powerful than just never having a dream to begin with. And I am not a writer and I could come up with a goddamn better story than this. So I completely see how people would see this as an AI script. So anyway, let's move on to other characters. Friend group. I'm calling them friend group because uh, I don't remember any of their names and I really don't care to know them. Why the hell does she have this huge group? This would have been so much better if she had one friend, maybe two friends, potentially three. But she's got this big group of friends who are all just one dimensional people. We got the one friend who's depressed. We got the one friend who naysays everything. We got the one friend who knows about the entire kingdom and where everything is. We got one who just appears and disappears without warning. I honestly thought there was gonna be like some sort of a uh, uh, thing in the future where that character was like magic and hiding it or something like that. But nope, she just kind of disappears every once in a while. We got one who sneezes, seriously. That, that's it, that, that's, that's the whole character's thing. We got one who's just stupid. Holy shit, I'm starting to realize. Are they supposed to be the seven dwarves? Is that what they were trying to do? Are they, they, is that supposed to be the seven dwarves? Well, I guess that's just solid proof. References do not make a good movie. Now let's talk about the main character, Asha. She isn't the worst out of the movie, uh, but boy, not the best. So she starts out utterly obsessed with the kingdom, telling all these newcomers about the rules of the kingdom and how wishes work and who the king is and how handsome and charismatic and magical and powerful the king is and how the king will grant anyone's wish. And the way that she was able to discover the dark intentions of the king 
is so goddamn stupid. So she goes in to have an interview with the king to become the king's uh, apprentice or, or assistant. I think it's assistant. And she does like a comedic, awkward, uh, clumsy girl bit. And then somehow they gradually get to a conversation about caring about the kingdom. And from there on, we're talking five minutes, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking like a five minute conversation here. The king instantly says, hey, I know I met you five minutes ago, but you said you care about the kingdom. You want to see the biggest secret in the entire kingdom that could completely ruin me? And then he shows her all of the wishes to the citizens. And then it's like, yeah, uh, I'm not going to grant any of these. You just met this random girl five minutes ago and are just dumping every deep, dark secret you have about the kingdom to her. Like, oh yeah, uh, this one of your grandpa playing guitar? Mm. Now, I'm not gonna grant him that wish because uh, it might be dangerous. And whenever Asha's like, hey bro, that's kind of wrong. He gets really pissy and then he's like, oh yeah, that's wrong? Well, I'm never granting your mom or your grandpa's wish ever. And then he just lets her go. He's like, hey, here's all of the secrets of the kingdom. Here's why I'm a bad guy. See, see how I'm a bad guy? All right, now, okay, now go off, start some sort of posse. Uh, you know, come back stronger and beat me. See how people think this was written by an AI. This is just silly on levels I cannot describe. So anyway, she goes to her mom and her grandfather and tells them that the king is doing this. She tells them that the king is like, has a hold of all of their wishes and stuff. And then granddaddy gets mad at her. Uh, 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 it doesn't make any sense. None of this makes sense in the movie. I guess they needed some sort of conflict to have the main character cry off into the middle of the forest and sing a song to a star. And that's what she does. She goes out to the woods and sings a song to a star and ends up wishing upon a star, you know, like the song. And the star that she sings to becomes a marketable plushie. Seriously, <laughs> that, that's all the character is, is cute little fluffy star, you know, being cute, floating around and shit. I mean, occasionally the star will give animals and inanimate objects the ability to speak every once in a while, but the star is the thing that gives Ash the will and the power to fight against the evil King Magnifico. And King Magnifico during all this time uh, is starting to realize that whenever he crushes wishes, it gives him more power. He opens a forbidden book, green, juices come out of him now he's all powerful and scary and god the ending of the movie is so anticlimactic if you guys really want to pause uh this video this is you know the end of the movie so it is spoilers but it trust me you don't want to watch this movie i mean if you do good luck i was really hoping something interesting would happen at the end of the movie something to bring this movie back from the brink of destruction maybe we'll learn why magnifico is a bad guy maybe asha will become like a powerful sorcerer and beat him with uh you know the star power or something or maybe beat him with the power that she had inside her all the time and she didn't know but no how magnifico was beat they sang <clears throat> they sang a song about wishing upon a star. That's how they beat him. I mean, I kind of get what they were going for, you know, with them being Disney and all, it's like the whole bit, but boy, is that a lame ass ending. And just a few other things about the world that I didn't get is the fact that the town or the kingdom, I should say, no one was like sad. No one was mad. Everyone seemed to be happy except the one uh, depressed character, which is one of her friends. I, I mean, I get it. Like Asha, she saw that the king was taking all of their wishes and she believed that everyone deserved to have a chance to obtain the wish themselves if he's not going to, uh, you know, grant the wish for them. I get that. Everyone was thriving. There wasn't really much wrong with it. Everyone was so excited about the king and just the concept of the king granting people's wishes. <clears throat> which doesn't really translate to the king being a bad dude necessarily. It would have made so much more sense if they actually gave him, you know, that motivation that I was talking about. So they would never have to worry that they'll never obtain it. I mean, sure, they'd just be hoping that the king would just miraculously grant them their wish, but still, like even her grandfather wasn't sad. Like he really wasn't, he wasn't upset. Like he was hoping that he'd get his wish, but it, it, it wasn't the end of the world because he didn't even know what it was. The movie would have become a lot more human and open a conversation about the complexities of people if we kind of delved into that uh, when it came to the king. 
But nah, they just wanted to stick with the whole black and white, good, bad, uh, you know, uh, uh, evil dude, spooky, scary, forbidden magic book. But this movie was extremely, extremely disappointing. I, w I was hoping, uh, I mean, to be fair, I wasn't really hoping for anything. Anytime I see a new Disney trailer come out, it's not really like, I'm not going, oh man, I can't wait to watch that. But for the 100 year anniversary movie, this was bad. It was bad. I there's no other word for it. But you know, it's not bad. Subscribing, that would be very good. I will grant your wish. You click that subscribe button. Oh, I'll grant your wish. Don't quote me on that. Don't quote me. Thank you for watching.